Hey drivers, are you looking for a new job or are you looking just to become a new lease driver? Well, NCI offers new Kenworth T680 double bunk condos with APU and refrigerator, all standard in all of their equipment. Come aboard and become a lease operator, or you can become a company driver. NCI offers regional positions, over-the-road positions, team positions, and also NCI will take on a few students if you've graduated from a trucking school. Pick up the phone, check out NCI, and see if they have what you're looking for at 888-311-7076. That's 888-311-7076. Marvin Keller Trucking is currently looking for drivers to expand their fleet. We have solo, team, lease purchase, owner operators, and even part-time local positions available. Their solo drivers get up to 54 cents a mile. Teams get up to 58 cents a mile. Late model Cascadias and Mac Anthems available. Your health benefits start on day one. That's nice. No touch freight and 60% drop in hook. Nice. Want something different? Join the elite fleet. Four days on and four days off. Hourly pay of $20 to $25 an hour. Want to start your own business? Check out the lease purchase program. With payments as low as $345, you can pay the truck off and start hiring your own drivers. Want more details? Call 888-418-5161, extension 280. Marvin Keller Trucking. Hey drivers, have you thought about becoming your own company? Have you thought you'd like to get your own authority and DOT number, but you just don't know how to go about doing it? Well, call JJ Keller and Associates. They can help you get the proper registration and credentials that you need to operate legally. They protect drivers from penalties and out of service orders as a result of not having the proper authority. They save drivers time by filing their paperwork and ensuring everything is correct. Drivers, they also help you with unified carrier registration, US DOT and MC numbers, MCS 150 updates, year around authority monitoring, and plenty more. Drivers, if you're looking to become your own company and you want your own authority number and DOT number today, call J.J. Keller & Associates at 888-601-2017. That's 888-601-2017 and tell them Talk CDL sent you. Thank you. All right, 8-23-2020. Yes, that's the date. Yeah, well, we never do that. No, we don't. I thought he'd add that in. Okay. Yeah, why not? Um, so here we are. Uh trucking podcast, blah blah blah. The uh uh article <laughs> I'm just trying to get my brain straight here. The article that I was searching for. Yeah, it takes a lot of work. Uh, the article I was searching for mm-hmm. back when Talk C D L started, it was like in 2015 or 2016, there was an article, and I believe it was in Kentucky. Right, and it was about a uh, a truck driver that robbed a bank, and he used his semi truck for the getaway vehicle. I remember that. See, I, I couldn't find the dang thing anywhere. Well, well, well that's okay though, because I know you're going to go looking for it, and we won't have time. Well, you never know if we have time. But I came across actually a pretty cool article in searching for the uh, one of the things I want to talk about today, because it's, it's kind of it's amusing. I mean, it's not, never amusing when someone robs a bank, but it's amusing like when what they call dumb criminals do dumb things. Like, for example, you remember when uh, uh, th- there was a guy in the news that he robbed, he broke, he was breaking into houses, and the way they caught him was he took a fine, some fines that he got <laughs> with his name and license number and address on it mm-hmm, and mm-hmm. stuffed them in the uh, door jam so the door couldn't shut. And, and he forgot them there when he left. And, of course, when the police showed up to the robbery scene, they found the cr- the, the dumb criminal's paperwork from the court. <laughs> so all they did was just went to his house. and No, sir, that wasn't me. It, well, it, well, they found him in a garage full of all kind of stuff he's been stealing. But anyways, so the trucker that I was trying to find, you know, here's a guy that robs a bank and he's using, he didn't have a trailer, but he had a bobtail, and he, he was using the bobtail to get away. And I'm quite certain he'd be pretty easy to pick out and easy to catch. I, I would say. 
But so, so check this out. Okay. So before we get into uh, what we came here to talk about today, it's an interesting story that I found, and it happened. And this story, in in looking for my story, um, like I said, we had put a big post up about that uh, trucker bank robber. But check this out. Okay. <laughs> and I was looking for it. I found this instead. This happened in 2016. I thought, you know, I want to. I kind of want to read a little bit of it and talk about it. The um, it says here's the title. It says FBI details how 4.8 million dollars worth of gold truck robbery in North Carolina led to Florida. Of course, it's Florida. But anyways, I, I seen a guy on the on on uh, one of the blogs today. He said, you know, nothing ever is a good ending when it starts out. Meanwhile, in Florida, <laughs> we we have all the bad stuff here. Okay, the melting pot. You know that's true. Florida. If if you want to know why Florida's drivers are really bad, it's because we have everybody from Massachusetts, New York, New Jersey, Michigan, and Pennsylvania. This is this is where the Northeast and North Central people come. So when you take the drivers from Massachusetts, Connecticut, New Jersey, New York, Michigan, all those upper states, and combine them all on one interstate, you have honestly probably a really bad looking racetrack mm -hmm. especially when they get over 80 all right now listen listen to this here again it says fbi details how 4.8 million dollar gold truck robbery in north carolina this happened actually believe it or not in 2016 but here's listen to this it said the fbi has revealed how thieves made off with gold bars worth four now you hear what they they got gold gold bar. bars exactly i'm like who the hell transports gold bars in a tractor trailer around here it says the FBI has revealed how thieves made off with gold bars worth $4.8 million in a truck robbery on Interstate I-95 last year, and it reads like a heist fit for Hollywood. And it's funny when you hear this story, it sounds, in fact, when people hear this, I'm going to get dramatic and mystery music playing in the background for us. <laughs> you know the music that's on, um, what's that ride, the Haunted House? Over at Disney, mm -hmm. that music would be awesome for this story. That's kind of psycho. Anyways, listen yeah, to you, you move from like, like I, I just throw that stuff together. The OEO that you hear from the Wizard of Oz to like maybe I can get like some <laughs> some Scooby Doo stuff going on. <laughs> Shaggy. Okay, so listen to this. Agents say an armed. It say that the armed robbers painstakingly prepared for the job using high-tech gizmo. Oh, and by the way, they caught them. Uh, it took a year. So it happened in 15. They, they, okay, they prepared a job using high-tech gizmos, including a GPS tracker and a remote-controlled pepper spray launcher to subdue the drivers. Yeah, I know. It gets, it's funny. It says, agent said the heist ringleader was Ad Adalberto. Ad Adalberto Perez, he was 46 at the time. He'd be uh, four years more, he'd be 50 now. It says, he was arrested this week at his home in Miami in a suburb of Opalaca, almost exactly a year after the March 5th, 2015 robbery in Winston County, North Carolina. Two accomplices made a uh, remain at large. Now listen to this, it says, it appears the case was cracked when a friend of Perez came forward. You know, it's funny. This is really how everybody gets caught. Why do you think cops go on the news and they go, you may not have really noticed somebody around you with this car or somebody in your family acting funny, but no detailed anonymous call in. You're rubbing your computer on your mic. I am? Yeah, like on the cord. Didn't oh, you hear it? Look at that. My gosh. You're going. Yeah, so. listen to that. Yeah. Well, doing, you're you're using that. you're yeah you're using accidentally your computer. On it. Yeah, well, that's because I've got like a computer in my hand because I'm just wanting to read this story, so they can't really see what's going on. I know, that's why I was politely telling you. Well, I'll make that part of the mystery music. <laughs> I mean, like the, them breaking into the truck. <laughs> All right, so and it says it, the case was cracked when one of Perez's friends came forward. What a friend, right? Mm -hmm. Friends like that who needs enemies. Mm -hmm. Okay, it said just after a few a few months ago. According to an F FBI affidavit unsealed in federal court this week, the friend said Perez spent about a year preparing for the heist. 
The Target, a routine shipment of gold bars aboard a semi-tractor trailer sent by Miami-based Republic Metals to a processing plant in Bridgewater, Massachusetts that serves jewelry makers in the Boston area. Hmm. Yeah, listen to this. It says the FBI says that the friend, now a confidential informer, said Perez bought a GPS tracker device online and had it mailed to the friend's address without telling him what was in the package. So, Mr. Like Mr. Big, it, doesn't it almost remind you of a, the Penguin and the Joker make it, planning like some nutty heist? <laughs> wang, 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 wang. Right? <laughs> That's what it sounds like to me. We're going back to the hideout and now, the bat lair. Can, can I ask you, um, the person playing the Penguin, is it... Is it um, Danny DeVito? No. Who, who, was the, yeah. who was the original one? Yeah, no, I was, I, for whatever reason, I was thinking of... Um, well, Danny DeVito played it in the movie. Yeah, and then... And then um, Oh. Who? Jack. Jack who? <sighs> Crazy guy, Jack, Jack. Oh, Jack, um... <sighs> I can't even think of his name. You're talking about Jack um, from The Shining. Yeah, Jack. I, I'm like totally lost it for a minute. I can't even believe that we don't even know Jack's last name. Everybody's going to be <laughs> Bumbleheads. I know, right? <laughs> it's, it's Nicholson. Thank you. I knew it was like almost like he a... He played uh, in it too. He was the, the Joker at the, in that same time frame, wasn't he? Um, honestly, I can't remember that. But yeah. I do know the Penguin was Danny DeVito. Yeah, and it was kind of a... I didn't really care for it. No, he, he did a good Joker. He, it was... Um, he was like if... if um, like, of course, Heath Ledger is the ultimate Joker because he did it really good. I thought Heath Ledger was the best Joker, yes. Yeah. But if you go right before that, but Jack, Jack Nicholson yeah, Jack was, was pretty cool. Yeah. What was the famous line? I'm glad you did. That was, that was pretty cool. No, yeah, but that was in the original Batman. Yeah, I don't know that. Okay, so the Target was a tractor trailer hauling gold bars, and, and the company's name is Republic Metals. I never even heard of them. They probably don't have their name printed on the side of the tractor trailer. I wouldn't think so. It says, FBI said that the friend, uh, now confidential informant, here's what he said. Um, somehow Perez stuck this tracking device, right? That I guess it's, you know, you track it on your phone or whatever, mm -hmm. underneath the tractor trailer, which is really kind of bizarre because you got to ask yourself, how the hell does... does uh, Republic Metals just leave their tractor trailer out in the open, or was somebody on the inside? Insider is a bait. Doesn't it sound like that's an inside job almost? I mean, to, I mean, I don't know. It's, but anyways, it says the affidavit doesn't say how Perez was able to gain access to the. Tra See, they even said they. It, they're not saying how did he even get it done. Mm -hmm. It says if if he had any relationship with the Trans Value Shipping Company. Or if the plot involves still more accomplices. I'm, I'm betting on more accomplices. Um, because you would think somebody that's hauling gold bars, they don't just park like... we. I leave the gold bar truck down at the Walmart parking lot there. Or, or, <laughs> why don't you leave it at the TA tonight there? Nobody will know. Just keep, it a, keep a seal on it. Mm -hmm. Nobody's going to bother the gold bars. I, I think somebody was on the inside with him. What do you think? Uh, I, I think it does sound like it. It says, the friend said Perez, uh, he placed the technology under the Transvalue trailer in order to track its location. So somehow he got to the trailer, inconspicuously climbed under the gold bar trailer, and had to, I don't know, if it's, is it a magnet? Do you tape it on? Do you use two-way tape? Did you use crazy glue? Who, who the hell knows? But he had to have enough time to inconspicuously crawl underneath the trailer that hauls gold bars that allegedly wasn't under guard and was able to place the tracker, right? It says, and then uh, Prez also rigged a pepper spray device inside the cab. Now, now this is getting bizarre, right? Now, mm -hmm. this is why I said it sounds like... So it's like, getting bizarre now? It sounds like the Joker. <laughs> it, it just sounds like something you'd see on Batman, right? So he was able to... Know where this tractor trailer is parked. Just slide underneath it. Mm -hmm. Put the tracking device on it. And then gain access into the cab and, and have enough time to rig a pepper spray device that he can remotely set off inside the truck that's going to make them 
gagging enough, I guess, to pull over, whatever the case is, Mm -hmm. while they're going down the road. That's Mm -hmm. what it sounds like it's going to happen. Now, I'm telling you, it just doesn't sound... Sounds like someone was pissing in his boot and trying to tell him that it was raining. Someone's BS in here. There's and something. the FBI guy got a lot of pee in his boot. Okay, so it says, um, it says Transvalue Chief Executive Officer Jay Rodriguez has said that the truck left Miami at 4 o'clock in the morning on a Sunday. The tractor trailer appeared much like any other truck driving up and down the East Coast. So... It was, like I said, it wasn't all, it didn't like have a, like a picture of a treasure chest on the side with gold bars mm-hmm. and like Daffy Duck going, mine, it's all mine, <laughs> right? No? Okay. That's pearls. All right. It said, um, the driver, the drivers, so there must have been a team. The drivers had no idea that they were being tracked by three armed robbers following them in the white van, in a white van. Shortly after dusk, along a lonely stretch of I-95 in North Carolina, that's usually pretty crowded, I-95. Mm-hmm. It, I'm, I'm trying to figure out where the lonely stretch is in, I, on, in North Carolina. Mm-hmm. I, I don't know. I mean, I-95 is like one of the busiest interstates there is. C- certain, sh- shortly after dusk. Dusk is just getting dark. Right. Um, that's usually the time when people are just getting off of work yeah. and they're still on their way home in some areas in 95. Yeah, I'm just trying to figure out the lonely part of I-95. And he says... The truck's cab suddenly filled with pepper spray, launched by remote control, forcing its sickened drivers to pull over. The white van stopped on the highway shoulder as well, at first claiming in Spanish that they were police officers. The men bound their hands with plastic ties and marched them into the woods. Okay, you're a police officer, you're under arrest, we're going to handcuff you with plastic and take you into the woods for, for what, questioning? I mean, what... What are we? What are we doing in the woods? Oh, that's that's for them to get away. I, okay, but they told me they were cops. It says then they put orange traffic cones to make the stop truck appear in innocuous. Innocuous. I hope that's the word I'm reading. It says and wore reflective clothing to appear as they belong on the roadside too, according to the affidavit. So they made it look like. They were supposed to be there doing work. It said the thieves then cut the trailer's locks, quickly unloaded 275 pounds of gold and about 40 silver coins into the van and sped off, leaving numerous drums drums of silver behind. So they weren't like super greedy. But what's funny is, now here's, here's, here's something I got to bring out. Okay. They have the balls to find the tractor trailer Crawl underneath it mm-hmm. and put the track on. Right. And then they have the balls to crawl inside it and rig the pepper spray from Batman's utility belt. <laughs> right. They got Guyvering it. Whatever. They're, they're, I mean, it just took a little bit of time. You can't. Right. Th- and planning. But they steal gold and only 40 coins and they're like, hey, let's get out of here. We can't be too greedy. But you have the balls all that time to do the other stuff. And now when it's time to gather the loot. Huh? Does it doesn't make does it make sense to you? You would almost think, wait a second, these guys had the balls to be relaxed and doing their thing back in Miami. Why are they now rushing? I'm just wondering if on that quote lonely stretch of Interstate 95 in North Carolina, in North, maybe a car was coming. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> car? I mean, you know, cars come up and that in, Interstate 95 is like always busy. It's always got someone. I mean, and that's I could, big. It's not. I mean, right. I could see like after two, three o'clock in the morning, maybe. But this said after dusk, there mm-hmm. was a lonely stretch. Yeah, I'm still how trying long, to. How long was the stretch? Fifty-three foot. <laughs> so anyway, so they made off with all this gold, forty coins, and left drums, drums, and drums of silver behind. By the time the two drivers came out of the woods and flagged down passing motorists, the thieves were long gone. After the robbery, the FBI informant said Perez showed him one of the 26 pounds. These gold bars weighed 26 pounds. He said, now here's what, here's what this dude was doing with these, this gold. Mm. It says, um, after the robbery, the FBI informant uh, showed Perez, or said that Perez showed him a 26-pound gold bar at his home. He said that he watched Perez 
as he chipped away pieces to sell it bit by bit. Oh, my I, God. Exactly. So, <laughs> no, the dude was smart enough to realize if I show up with this big stamped gold bar, I'm going to get questioned. Mm-hmm. I mean, listen, when when you go to a junkyard now, okay, and you have, like, say you take an air conditioner, and I don't mean a little window air conditioner. I mean, like, a big giant one off of a home, mm-hmm. or you take copper tubing or anything like that to a junkyard. You now have to have identification Mm -hmm. because they know a lot of these guys steal it and show up to cash it in. So can you imagine somebody showing up with, you know, whatever, 26 pounds into 250? That's what, 10? 10 gold bars. Wait, no. Yeah. 10 gold bars weighed, what did it say, 220, 260 or 240 pounds of gold was that? That's an interesting thought. It wasn't many gold bars, was it? So you're looking at each bar weighed 26 pounds, 275 pounds of 275 pounds of gold. So that means that means it was literally a little more than 10 or about 10 gold bars. 10 times 26. Is 260. So the the gold bars were probably a little more than 26 point something pounds or whatever that which would come out to 275. Isn't that crazy? Just 10 bars all mm-hmm. they took and it was worth 4.8 million dollars. So here's a dude going home, right, and and showing that you know he was smart enough to just chip away at these gold bars. Now listen to this right then. This is the funny part. We're getting to the funny stuff. It says, um, he used his cell phone to take photos of this gold and the tools Perez used. It said the informant, now known as CS or confidential source, um, gave the images to the FBI. Um, In one, the gold bar shows the distinctive Republic Medal stamp. Perez told us CS he sold all the gold he kept from the robbery and used the money to buy three homes, three Nissan vehicles. Like, that guy already Nissan. Has, he already has bad taste. It's like, dude, you're buying Nissans? You have $4 million and you're buying a Nissan. He's trying to stay low level, man. He's not trying to stay low level. He bought three freaking houses. Dude, seriously. Anyways. They could have been like minor houses. So he buys three, or three, three homes, three Nissans, and a boat. He also had some gold fashioned into jewelry. That's so, what it was. Exactly. He had that big old gold chain around his neck. Probably did. It said the informant said Prez gave him a gold bracelet. Um, it says after a friend came forward, investigators were able to use cell phone tower records to show that the phone linked to Prez traveled north through Florida along the same I-95 route as the truck driver that day. The FBI affidavit says the phone's last known location was in Dillon, South Carolina, where the truck uh, refueled. The robbery took place about an hour later. It says Perez uh, remained in jail without bail on federal robbery and firearm charges pending Tuesday's hearing. The complaint was quite an interesting read, but they are, listen to this part, they are merely allegations, said the attorney. Um, it said in an email, we intend to fully investigate these serious allegations. Okay, so he had gold bars with the actual stamp from the company in his house. Mm-hmm. And um, he there was a tracking device put on by him. The friend knew about it. He traveled that same day from Miami to North Carolina. And they said, we're going to check these allegations out. Oh, wait. Remember when he said, he might be I bought three houses and some Nissan vehicles and made some gold jewelry with, with my money. So I think he kind of admitted it when he said that. What do you think? I just, I just think that sometimes you're looking for a bank robbing trucker and you find a guy that's robbing <laughs> truckers. <laughs> so this, the, good th- the good news out of all this, because we're a trucking talk show, the good news is it wasn't the trucker that no did it. No truckers were harmed. No truckers were harmed in this act. Well, they, they just had some pepper spray. You know, it's kind of interesting, though. I, I would say that would be really harmful. Yeah, it's almost, it's so much like the old Batman shows. Like, these guys would, there would, all of a sudden there's like an alligator under the floor coming up through it and gas coming up through it. And they're <gasps> going, what's going on? Oh, we better get out of here. Right? And, and they go outside and they get robbed or shot or killed. It's the same thing. It's like the dumb, it's almost like the truckers were in it. Well, I hope the trucker wasn't in on it. 
But it's like, I know this. If all of a sudden I'm driving my tractor, right, and I know I got a load of gold bars in the back, and most likely I've got guns on me because those guys are mandated to carry gun mm-hmm. guns. My my big thing is I'd be pulling over and I'd be going, listen, man, something's not right here. This is tear gas. We're burning up here. Something's going on. We better be careful. Not get out and go, oh, you're with the police. I'd get out with my guns drawn. I'd be coming out of that cab with the hammer back or the 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 uh, chambered a uh, chambered bullet ready to be in a gunfight because nobody's going to rob me. I just, it just sounds, they'll find out, they'll find out that that there's more involved in it. This was four years ago though. I'm just, I'm just reading. They only just finally, I'm reading. No, no, I found this story from four years ago. Yeah. But you guys see if there's a follow up story. No, no, I, I, that's probably a good idea. But anyways, the things you find when you're looking for something else is kind of bizarre. Isn't that a cool story? Yeah. I mean, not cool, cool. Hopefully them truckers weren't involved. Wink, wink. Hey, there's tear gas in here. We better get out. Oh, we forgot our guns, by the way, bank robbers. I, I don't know. It just, it, it's weird. It was very weird. Anyways, what do you got? What do you think the um, toughest states are for breaks and maintenance? For breaks and maintenance? Yeah, when they do, like, inspections. Oh, so, like, we have statistics on who actually mm-hmm. is, is harder on truckers? Right. Well, what I'm doing right now is I'm going to let you all know so, that so, from... So, moving on. Well, no, hold on. No. I just want to let everybody know real quick before I do forget. August 23rd through the 29th, this this week, there is a um, inspection. It's a, a break safety week. So, check your breaks. Make sure everything's going well. Because if not, you're going to be one of these statistics, and we don't want a statistic. So for brake violations, where do you think the biggest states are? Okay, I'm just going to guess based on DOT officers that were a little rammier that I found. Mm -hmm. So I'm hoping that California's got to be in there. They're like mother mother loaded. Not for brakes. Oh, really? Oh, yeah, that's true. They just get you for one over. Um, how about Tennessee? Not for breaks. I know, right? No, who is it? Who's number one? Virginia. Virgi- oh, yeah, I can believe that. Virginia, then North Dakota, Texas, Missouri, Montana, Idaho. Wait, wait, wait. Virginia, then no. Missouri? No, North Dakota. North Dakota? Yeah. Really? North Dakota. Interesting. And then Texas. Mm-hmm. Hmm. Then Missouri, then Montana. Really? Mm-hmm. So if you're going into these states, it's probably a good idea to make sure your brakes are tip top. Right. Now, maintenance violations. Maintenance, and that could be mean many things. Right. It's it's the broader spectrum of Who's it all. Number one. Texas. Texas is number one for maintenance mm-hmm. violations. Then California. And maintenance violations for Texas is ninety point one percent. Okay, what what does that mean? It it means that um when they pulled them over for, and these are current statistics for so 2019. 90% of everybody will end up with a violation if you get pulled over in Texas. Maintenance, for maintenance. Mm-hmm. Interesting. Yeah. If and they're looking for maintenance. If they're looking for maintenance, yeah. And then California, Mississippi, Virginia, Montana, and Kentucky. Really? Then it starts going down there. Montana's in there. Mm-hmm. Kentucky's in there. Mm-hmm. Wow. Was Virginia in the second one too? Or not? Yeah, it was the. So Virginia was number one in the no, in the breaks, uh-huh. and then what were they in the in the maintenance? Fourth. Wow. At eighty. And it sounds like this, And the same ones like Kentucky, Texas, North Dakota was only in the first. Montana was in the second. Okay, interesting. Mm-hmm. All right, you guys, you heard it. Stay out of those states unless you are tip top on breaks and maintenance. Right, because they're like the some of the toughest states that they will pull you on. Awesome. So I, I read an interesting, uh, actually I had a, a trucking company I was talking to the other day, uh, sent me a, a chart and I wanted to read it. It's, it's actually quite interesting in, in today's um, pandemic, um, what you know the United States is going through or even the world. Do you have, it, you have your copy? I sent you a copy of it. Yes, I have it here. Well, I just, I just, I find it interesting when you open this up and I'm going to open this. What this is, everybody that's listening, this is a chart of what truck drivers are getting on unemployment. And I'm actually, I've looked at some trucker unemployment stats. And did you know that April 
set a record for the most trucker jobs loss hmm. since 1990 when the uh, records are being kept on, you know, when X amount of jobs are lost in the industry over maybe a recession or problems, blah, blah, blah. Mm-hmm. April, which was, like they said, was a continuous, because 2019 didn't have the pandemic. We kept telling everybody the economy was getting bad just by the trucking industry because dry van freight was going out. You had the tariff wars going on. Well, mix that all in with the coronavirus and and companies shutting down, not trucking companies, but like manufacturers mm-hmm. because of the coronavirus. And you have, I think they said an, a record 83,000 truckers lost their job in April. Isn't yeah. that crazy? Yeah. I mean, because, you know, usually the big push is to find truck drivers. But here's... Here's what everybody's got to know. This chart that I want to read, trucking companies are realizing based on this chart that the new competition to attract truck drivers is now the unemployment office. Mm -hmm. That's competition. Mm -hmm. Now listen to this. I'm going to start with, I'm going to start with Alabama because Alabama's on here. We only have so many states that we have a chart on. And what it shows is it shows different states what the normal um, maximum amount of unemployment is, and then with the six hundred dollar boost that everybody had for the first so many months, and now it's down to this chart showing four hundred. Was it like twenty four states on this chart? Twenty four, twenty five? No, there's not. There's two different. It's the same chart. Yeah, I know. But if you count all them on the one side, it's like. Is it that many? Yeah. Okay, I'm not gonna probably read them all. Okay, so the first state is Alabama. And first thing I'd like to say about Alabama is you guys are getting ripped off. <laughs> I mean, because your unemployment max benefits are cheap. Well, Alabama and Florida are the same. Well, and Tennessee. I mean, I just noticed that. It's like $275 is the maximum amount to collect in, which is insane. The standard, it says the standard amount of unemployment in the state of Alabama is $275. And if I was Alabama people, I think I'd protest that. Well, Mississippi and, and Louisiana should protest because they're less. Okay, we'll get to them. I didn't realize it. So Alabama, you still got a little more than somebody else. Yeah, Louisiana is only two forty seven, and Mississippi's only two thirty five. But with the bonus of six hundred dollars, they were getting eight hundred seventy five dollars to right. stay home, which isn't a lot compared to a trucker. But there's a lot of truckers out there that only maybe gross a thousand bucks till you take out taxes. They ain't bringing home eight seventy five. <laughs> so it actually was bad, more beneficial. Think about it. If I'm getting eight seventy five and I live in Alabama, right? Eight seventy five non tax to sit home. Guess what? I'm not on the road spending money. I'm at home. All right, and I'm collecting eight seventy five. Now look at Arkansas, four hundred and fifty one dollars. I'm reading the six hundred on the right. Like, mm-hmm. The right. Okay. $451 was the standard unemployment rate with their $600 bonus. These guys are bringing home 1051 Clear. Every week. Why the... You can't blame a truck driver for saying, I'm making as much as I was or maybe a dollar more to sit at home. Why the hell should I go out and I'm on the road. It's costing me $200 to eat a week. and I'm gone from my family for weeks at a time. I'm going to take a break. Mm-hmm. You know, you can't blame the guy. And then with freight the way it is, who the hell wants to do it? Now, just jump down to a couple high ones. Look at Colorado. Their standard unemployment rate is actually almost three times the amount as the other guys. $618 plus the $600 federal boost. These guys are are getting $1,218. If you flash over to what the the boost is now, it's now $400 is what this chart's saying. I thought it was three, but they're saying $400. So if you're in Alabama... You went from eight seventy five down to six seventy five. You still probably want to sit home, but if you look at Colorado, they're getting an extra four hundred dollars on top of their six eighteen. They're still bringing home a thousand and eighteen dollars to look sit at, at home. Look at Jersey. New Jersey, they're pretty high. New Jersey's standard unemployment rate is seven hundred and thirteen dollars to collect, with the six hundred dollar bonus from the federal government. They're making one thousand. Three hundred and thirteen, thirteen hundred dollars. But here's the here's what gets me though, the drivers. Yeah, you can understand, like you said, they're making. You know, some of them are making more just by staying home. Some, uh-huh. yeah, not all, but right. some. Right. But the person that worked at some of these companies, 
That's that, a, you're talking about like Walmart? Yeah. That's what I was just going to say. We, we, we're going to get to that too. But yeah, go ahead. You're right. Wait, go, go with it. What, what does a Walmart guy make sitting, you know, going and getting the carts in the parking lot and yeah, maybe ringing out a few customers? What does that know. guy get? I, I don't know. Minimum wage at best. I think it's a little above minimum wage. But when you look at, and, and let's not even go with Walmart. Okay, let's go with the, the manufacturers. Well, well, Factuers? Go back to Walmart <laughs> just for a second. Uh-huh. They don't even get 40 hours, do they? Some do. Oh, I thought yeah. that Walmart's one of those stores that keeps everybody at 25, 30 hours so they don't have to pay them, like, benefits. No, there's some that are still, you know, some companies are Is that, I, I didn't 40 know. hours, yeah. But if you look at, okay, so our manufacturers, because some of the stuff's not coming out. Walk with me for through Walmart for one second. Okay. I thought we were past that. No, I want to add it up. Okay. You said about a guy in Walmart... I just want to show. Now you got a professional trucker sitting at home making a thousand to thirteen hundred dollars. What does a Walmart guy? What does he normally bring home? You know, even know. at ten bucks an hour, the guys. If he got forty, he's grossing four hundred dollars minus his taxes. Mm-hmm. He's bringing home what three hundred and three hundred bucks, maybe mm-hmm. clear. Now he's on unemployment, right? And he's still he's and he making gets more an money. Extra, he gets an extra six hundred dollars. So the standard UA is say four or five hundred in one of the states. He gets another. Six. He's bringing home double, actually almost triple of what he would actually net by sitting home. And see the government. I seen an interesting article the other day. They said the government is now disco- discovering that the amount of money they were boosting these guys might actually be hindering them and persuading them not to go back to work. Well. My, my reaction was, duh. Well, exactly. It was, duh. If a person's making, like, here's what they should have done is, because I don't know anything about unemployment because I've never was on it like that. But if you were making $400 a week for your unemployment or for your um, regular paychecks, that's what you should be getting for unemployment. You shouldn't be getting more on unemployment. Well, okay. I, I, I know you're trying to say what the right thing would be to do. Yeah, because here's the thing. You have some people that might be making a lot of money and then had to go on unemployment, so now they're making half the amount. Okay, so I I understand what the right thing is to do. All I'm trying to do is show why it's even worse than it shows. And remember what what we were saying is the competition with trying to hire a trucker now is really the unemployment office. And it's not just trucking, like you said. And Walmart, we probably shouldn't use Walmart as, as an example, only because... Walmart didn't lay anybody off. They were the ones that kept working, right? right? <laughs> but let's go to to some of these manufacturers. Let's go to Tyson, yeah. or let's go to Tyson's good. Um, Procter and Gamble, whatever. I, yeah. You know these places that actually supply the products that the drivers are hauling, right? And those companies, a lot of the, them were shut down, right? So that's where, when it comes down to it, where. That's where the driver's being impacted because those people are, are shut down. Well, if those people are shut down and they were making decent money, they're not going to, not decent, but not making as much money as the unemployment, they're not going to want to go back to work. So let's just use Tyson as the example. If a Tyson person, where's Tyson at? Virginia? They're all over. Okay, let's just say, let's I just. Think Arkansas. All right, well, there you go, Arkansas. A person that is in Arkansas that worked for Tyson now might be getting, um, what, $1,851. What if their paychecks were normally only 500 and some dollars? So they're not going to go back to work. That's right. So now Tyson's still waiting for them to get their employees back so that they can operate better, and they're not producing as much freight for our drivers to be able to haul. So it's just a vicious circle is what I'm trying really to get to. Yeah, no, I, 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 exactly. You're right. And, and again. The problem with, you know, now that freight is starting to pick up, mm-hmm. trucking companies are like, you know, that's this, this chart that we're reading off of was sent to me by a trucking company because this guy was the director of this mid-sized company and he had to go, he has to show up at a meeting every week to show why applications are down, why hires are down, why like, say for example, if you have 500 trucks or a thousand trucks, why well, you only have eight people in your orientation? Mm-hmm. And a lot of people are going, well, wh- why would they need more than that? Well, because you, you're obviously, if you have 500 trucks, you know, you have 500 drivers that are over the road. It's constantly turning. I don't care how good the trucking company is. Over the road companies are going to be constantly turning drivers. 
It's just the nature of the beast. Well, okay. yeah, and some of them do add a couple of trucks every year or so. Well, not just that. It's, you know, either way, trucking companies that are smart will hire, even when they don't have an opening, they'll hire and rent trucks. Right. Only because of, they know that there's going to be, a, you can, you could come in on a Monday, the one director told me. He said, you can be full, come in on a Monday, and there's eight trucks parked against the fence at, with keys in them. Drivers just turned them in and didn't say a word. So you just never know. But anyways, this guy has to go to a, a meeting every Monday or Friday, and he has to show his bosses, you know, here's, you know, obviously he's probably thinking, I don't want to, I don't want to lose my job with them thinking is it, that I'm not doing my job. And so he went and he looked all this stuff up and he, and he was like, wow, this is amazing. I mean, mm-hmm. we're actually up against unemployment where guys are legitimately, you know, even if you take a trucking company that pays a guy 50 cents a mile, if the guy's running 2,500 miles a week, what is that, like 1250 a week? Okay. Minus taxes, the guy's only bringing home maybe 900 to 1,000 bucks. That's it. So the unemployment's really really kind of comparing to what they're, but the, the difference is, is they get to stay home. They're not out on the road, but what they're doing, what are they doing? They're hurting themselves. How are they hurting themselves? Well, because freight is getting better. Companies do want to hire okay. and the companies that you want to go with, the good companies are looking at as, well, you have an opportunity to get back to work, but you're not. What's your reasoning for not getting back to work? The only one, the only guys that are hurting themselves in that respect, I'll tell you right now, are not the good ones. It's the guys that are really, really, really bad that barely can get a job to begin with. Okay. But other than that, right now, with the last six months or eight months, there is an, a trucking company that's not going to go, yes, we understand in these times you didn't have work because there isn't a lot. I see trucking companies all the time. They want drivers, but yet they don't. I know companies right now, they're hiring. But they're hiring at such a slow rate where they'll take a guy's application and they will make sure they check out three or five years, 100%. Well, yeah. Well, but my point is when freight is really good, you and I both know a trucking company, when they know they got 30 empty trucks and they got enough freight for more than 30 more trucks, they got a fire put up their butt to get people in the door. And therefore, we run the guy's DAC. Nothing bad is on there. If, if, if we, we verify at least one year of experience and we don't see anything bad on the crim, we're bringing his ass in. Boom. Within a day, they're saying, you got the job, and they're giving him a bus ticket or a plane ticket. That's in good times. Right now, they're, so, they're going so slow that they really don't need the driver because they don't have the freight. Well, some of them do have the freight. And what I'm trying to say is that's where the drivers are hindering themselves because if they keep staying at home... The, the companies that, that, like, what if they stopped doing this? What if, when did they do the next review on the unemployment bonuses? When's that supposed to run out? I don't know. Ooh, say it runs out at the end of September. Okay, so say it does. Well, some of these drivers, they're going to have it hard coming back into the industry if they've already had, like, say they weren't working before COVID hit. Now they're going on, you know, almost 10 months of no non-employment. But... Only with a really super good company that'll hurt them. Okay. Drivers don't go for the good companies. Here's the other thing. If you were a really good runner and you were making some really good money, right? Mm -hmm. You have to possibly pay taxes back on this unemployment, right? That's what I read the last time. Yeah, I think you do. Sure. So you could end up having yourself hindered because you want to stay out longer. You might end up owing taxes at the end of the year instead. Well, I'm just, I mean, we talked about this before, this part of it, and you can, a truck driver that has the experience, right, and not a bad record, he can take a year off, he can take two years off. Yes, they can. Yes, they can. You're shaking your head. No, but they, I've seen it a million times. A trucker can take a year off and he can go right, there's some trucking companies right now, they're advertising, if you have a year in the last five years, verifiable, they will hire you. They're saying if you have in the last 10 years, more than five years experience, they will hire you. Meaning if you go back 10 years, right? And say, what are we in? What's it? You, this is August 23rd. Is if that you, a specialized if, carrier? If you No, it's not. It's a big company, I know. And their policy is if you go back to August 23rd right now of 2010, that would be 10 years. And if from August 
2010, you drove five years and one month, or one day rather, and you took off, okay, from that point till now, you technically can be hired by them because you have more than five years, five years verifiable in the last 10 years, technically. There are companies like that also. Now, they're not companies I would go to work for, but I'm just saying, trucker could do it. Yeah, because I always heard that it was, you need to have so much experience in the last three years. Correct. There's, it depends on the trucking company's insurance. And a lot, some of the bigger ones are self-insured and can make their own rules up also. You got to understand that. Yeah, I guess that's true. But still, uh, drivers, are, you know, most of these drivers, that at least that we know, are really professional and they wouldn't want to mess with their CDO in that kind of way. And they'd rather go and get back to work. Yeah. If I was driving, I wouldn't have taken off, but here, I want, one of these days we're going to do a podcast on the worst trucking companies to work for. <laughs> I know a trucking company right now that a guy called me a few years ago and he's like, man, do you know anybody that I can get a job at? And I was like, yeah, call this company because I know that they've taken certain things. And this dude had a reckless driving in the last six months when he had called me mm -hmm. and he had like, like a 15, it's guy had like a horrible record. He calls me back the next day. He goes, man, thank you. Thank you. They're going to hire me. They're taking me. I'm going to orientation next week. I said, did you tell him you had the reckless in there? He goes, yeah, I told him everything. He said, and they're going to take me. Mm -hmm. I said, and so, so now that's a trucking company. I won't, I won't say their name cause I'm not here to degrade them, but that's a trucking company that, if you have a CDL and you can fart and chew gum at the same time, you're going to get a job there. Of course, the good truckers wouldn't want to go there anyways. No. So, but anyways, that's, I just wanted to show that unemployment thing. I actually, actually have um, a couple other stats that I wanted to read about trucker unemployment. Like I said, in April, um, I pulled it up about trucker unemployment. In April, it said that the, the United States set a record for... Uh, the most trucker job losses in a, in a one-month period, which was 83,000. Um, so I looked up a couple other ones. Just basic Americans unemployed. What do you think the, the amount of uh, people are unemployed right now? Oh, I know it's really huge right now. Yeah, it's, it's over 30 million. And, and that's that are collecting. Some ran out of benefits or can't collect. So if you just double that, you're talking 50, 60 million people out of work right now. And so it's, I read an interesting story today. Do you know um, Alec Baldwin and his wife? She's famous too. I can't think of who she is. Um, but anyways, they had a daughter, and she's like a model, right? Beautiful girl. Well, any of the Baldwin. Yeah, she, and got, she got robbed and beaten. Ooh. And there was actually witnesses, and they actually um, ended up, the police ended up getting a description and, and pulled them over and arrested them. But like they, they came up to her in a parking lot and punched her face in. You should see this girl. She's like in the, they were showing her face all black and blue. And, and I thought at first, I'm like, oh yeah, Miss Spoiled Brat, you got, you, you, you probably started a fight with the, no, there was actual witnesses. She's just walking to her car, I guess, and got attacked, right? And, and beat in a parking lot and they robbed her, jumped in a van and took off and the cops got him. Well, my point is, You've got probably 60 million people out of work. People are desperate. And they said record amount of gun sales are going on right now. I'm not trying to put the scare into to you drivers out there. But you guys are out on the road. You really need to make sure you protect yourself. Because especially when you park in a truck stop or anywhere. I think it's Michelle Pfeiffer's her mom. Is it Michelle Pfeiffer? I thought that. I don't know. She. Someone like that, though. It's somebody like Michelle. Watch her write in now. I didn't marry him. Ew. Ew. <laughs> Cooties. No, but what I was trying to tell the drivers is, if you're parking at a truck stop, always remember, when you park in the back because it's less light coming in your truck, less noise, that's where you run the risk of getting out. Maybe you get out to take a leak. And you're half tired. And next thing you know, you get whacked in the head with a bat. I'm telling you. I had a friend in Mississippi. Remember Kyle? Mm -hmm. Guys, he was at a truck stop meeting somebody, and he's walking um, by the dumpsters. He's, he's walking into the parking lot. He goes by the dumpsters, and two dudes jumped him. Do you remember what happened to Kyle? They smashed a beer yeah. bottle in his face. 
It was at a, a yeah by the dumpster. He had to have every bone in his face reconstructed. This poor guy, We're super nice guy, Kyle is. Okay, mm -hmm. but he actually had to have his face reconstructed because, of course, they did more damage than just smashing a beer bottle on his face. But they all it was was to rob the guy. They took his money. And it was in bad times. It was back, I think, back when the other depression or uh, recession was going on. So drivers, be super extra careful right now. You have people that are desperate. And when people are desperate, even good people do bad things when they're desperate. And if it means robbing some poor unsuspected trucker and a truck stop, you could be the next victim. You, you could be the, you, if you're driving and you're delivering into a city, where you're not sure where you're at, I'd be really careful, especially if it's at night, walking around. That's just some advice, Ruth Dan. What do you think? Kim Basinger was his first wife. So it was, it was him and Kim Basinger's kid. I'm not sure, but it, he's Yeah, got... that's who it was, because it was somebody famous. I remember I read it a, a couple hours ago. So, yeah, it was Kim Basinger and Nala Baldwin's daughter. And... Yeah, looks she, just like your mom. And she even said... Ireland. She even said that the police told her... That's her name, Ireland. That's mm -hmm. right. The police told her that it's a really... A lot of this going on right now. And so I would tell truck drivers, warn your kids. You know, people parking at a Walmart even. If you park at the end of the parking lot at night, oh, I need to, I need to run out and get, you know, uh, uh, an ingredient. Oh, I got a craving. I'm going to run to Walmart or some store at, at 9 o'clock at night or whatever. And you park in a dark area. And sometimes you're so used to not getting... I'm going to tell you something. People in nice neighborhoods, sometimes you, you think, oh, you, you feel safe. Just when you feel safe, boom. All I'm saying is carry a gun and shoot the bad guy. And I'm not joking. I mean it. Shoot him. I say it. Did we you got, see... We got Hunter, Hunter and Regan. We got them tasers. Exactly. Truck drivers, listen, don't be afraid to carry. Yeah, if you don't want a gun, get taser. Your, get your carry permit. Carry a gun. I know I would if I was back in the road. It would be me and my gun. Ruthann, we've been on this podcast for quite a while, and I'll be honest with you, I'm ready to get off it. <laughs> I'm just kidding. My word of the day. What is your word of the day? Dauntless. Dauntless. Mm -hmm. Listen. Dauntless. And it come and word of the day comes from where? Word genius. Word genius. You guys want to get the word of the day? Download Word Genius. Wordgenius.com. Sign up. Yeah, sign up for it. It's actually it's free, right? Yeah, it is free. It's free. Sign up and get the word of the day. Get broaden your horizons. Get well, smarter. It, it, it has it has a lot of other stuff in it. You know, like it, it gives the word of the day, but it also will help you with like it will just out of the, out of the blue send me something that says what is a word that is similar to. You know, okay. like it'll throw other stuff at it. But the word dauntless, D-A-U-N-T-L-E-S-S, -S, mm -hmm. is showing fearlessness and determination. Be dauntless. Really? Mm -hmm. so, so being fearlessness. Showing fearlessness. Is dauntless. Mm -hmm. Fearlessness and determination. So when you're trying to overcome something, so you're, you're like, say you're afraid to scuba dive. But you're mm -hmm. going to say, I'm going to tackle my scuba diving. I'm going to do this and I'm going to come back up and I'm going to be happy about it. That's being dauntless. Or if you're not afraid to go out for ice cream after Troy said to be careful in the parking lots. You're right. Dauntless. You're determined to get that ice cream. You know. Without showing fear. I really enjoyed this podcast. I'm glad. I really did. That's good. I really did. I enjoy everybody out there. Um, everybody that, you know, we've told you guys that we would, you know, Make sure we get some of you on the show. You know, keep keep in mind we're uh, recording once a week right now during these times. Um, if if somebody has a story really interesting or an idea for a story, give us a call or email us at ruthann at talkcdl.com. And uh, send us your videos, your pictures, everything. We really enjoy being a part of the trucking world. If I can't be out there driving. Well, I could be, but I, I don't want to be. <laughs> um, we really, really, truly, Ruthann, we literally are on the air now um, a little over four years. All right. Are we coming up on five years or four? We started in, oh, at the end of 15. Yeah, this is going to be five years. Interesting. Yeah, so this November will be our fifth year. 
that uh, Talk CDL started. So we thank everybody that follows the show. And, uh, you know, uh, we're going to have a couple other trucking podcast guests in the future. Yeah, and, I have like a whole bunch I'm setting up right now. Well, I've got, I've got a guy that has a trucking podcast. I want everybody to stop in and say hi and tell him Talk, Talk CDL sent you. His name is the Kingfish. I really like the Kingfish. He's a real mellow kind of guy. He likes to bring the news. And uh, he has a, a podcast going on. So uh, let the Kingfish know. Troy sent you over there. I'm gonna, we're going get to the, get the Kingfish on the show one of these days. But other than that, Ruth Ann, do we have anything else? Are we out of here? Stay safe. Stay safe. Peace. Peace. Praise the Lord.